here tonight to lend my voice to what the Lord has begun to do. And I'm going to share only three things with you tonight that I believe you need to gain momentum. The aircraft gains momentum. Sometimes it appears as if it's looking back, it's going back, but it's actually gaining momentum, getting ready. So in case your life or your situation looks as if you are using a reverse gear, don't worry, it's a matter of time. Very soon, you'll be cruising at 37,000 feet above sea level. Yeah. You may be going through a dark chapter of your life. It's not the entire book. Let nobody laugh at you yet. Because very soon, they will laugh with you. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. When we speak about gaining momentum, beloved, there are certain things that you need to pay close attention to. There are things you need to pay attention to. The Lord said to me, in 2022, you must be intentional. <laughs> you cannot afford to live your life anyhow. So you've got to be intentional about everything. And the Lord said to me that in 2022, he is going to make ladders available. It was so strong in my heart. Ladders are for risers. Get ready to climb. Get ready to soar. Get ready to rise. Because after God has spoken, every other speaker is a latecomer. God has spoken. This is his year and you will partake of his grace. Yeah. In gaining momentum, there are several things you need, but I'm sharing only three with you. And the first one is your tongue. Mm. Spiritual warfare is real. In the realm of the spirit, it's either you are divinely assisted or demonically opposed. There's no neutrality when it comes to spiritual things. The use of tongue, not only your tongue, I'm going to dissect some things for you tonight. The use of tongue will play a crucial role in the gaining of momentum in your life. Making speed, breaking ground, Getting over limitations and barriers. The use of tongue. And I'm going to divide that into two. The first one, Zechariah chapter number one, beginning from verse number 18, is a profound scripture. And at a point during this message, I'm going to make you rise up to pray. Nobody can pray for you like you. Please pray with all your life. Zechariah chapter 1, beginning from verse number 18. Then lifted I up my eyes and saw, and behold, four hands. Please go ahead. And I said unto the angel that talked with me, What be this? And he answered me, These are the hands which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. He did not say they scattered Babylon. He did not say they scattered Egypt. They scattered Judah. Place of covenant. People of God. And <laughs> Israel and Jerusalem. Please go ahead. And the Lord showed me four carpenters. They said, I, what come this to do? And he spake, say, these are the ones which have scattered Judah so that no man did lift up his head. This is the purpose. So the heads will not be lifted. Now listen to me, beloved. The intention of pain is to consume you. And pain is as big as you make it. The intention of pain is to consume you. That's why in physics, and I'm speaking as a coach now, energy follows focus. 
whatever you focus on has the tendency to expand. It does. So if somebody hurts you, you can choose to focus on the pain and continue to allow it to expand while the person is having a great time at Mr. Biggs. You are here crying. He raped me last year. My father didn't treat me well. My husband married another. Me impregnated somebody. And you focus on the pain, on the pain, so that your head will not be lifted. That's the purpose. The devil is so bad, there is no goodness in him. You cannot afford to hand over the steering of your life to people. Take charge. Be in charge. God gave your life to you as a gift, as a loan. Enough of aligned people. Be in charge. Let God be pleased no matter who is offended. When God blesses you, you owe nobody any explanation. Stop living to make people like you. When my attention is drawn to, oh, somebody is saying something on social media about you, I find myself. Because for you to have taken a portion of the message I preached, to have removed and removed and leave the explanation, it means you listened to me. I preached to you. It means I impacted you. You are only a confused fan. You did not understand the grammar I was speaking. I preached a message in church recently, and the title of the message is Thank God for your penina. Was it not penina that made? Stop focusing on pain. It will consume you. Who doesn't have a story? Pastor Roti, my son, and your wife. Who does not have a story? Who does not have a challenge? When people, oh my God, when they, they get to their room and they take their phone and they snap one corner and they post it, you want to kill yourself. If the camera should flip <laughs> and you see the other side, is that why you want to kill yourself? Do you know what they are battling with? Of them, I don't want to go into that today. But some of you, you are allowing your past to define your future. What is wrong in you? <laughs> is it because people make up so well? You think they don't have challenges? There's what we call public behavior. And there's what we call private behavior. <laughs> Is it because you see the way they love on they say, my darling, my lover, my everything. You think two plus two is always four? <laughs> and you want to kill yourself? You get to you say, come, come on, if you, if you see eh, Mr. Jones, the way he was just open display of affection, look at you, my husband. You want to scatter your marriage? Do you know what Mrs. Jones is going through in her home? And they both agreed to be acting the scripts. And you want to kill yourself? Stay in your lane. They, I don't even know what happened to my life. When I was in secondary school, I committed abortion three times. That's why I think I'm not married. Says who? That's why I don't have a chance. Says who? We're talking about the almighty God, the rewriter of history, the changer of destiny. 
Micah chapter 7, beginning from verse number 18, message translation, is a powerful and most profound passage. Where is the God who can compare with you? Wiping the slate clean of guilt, turning a blind eye, a deaf ear to the past sins of your punched and precious people. You don't nurse your anger and you don't stay angry long for mercy is your special. That's what you love most. Please go ahead. And compassion is on its way to us. You will stamp out our wrongdoing. You will sink our sins to the bottom. When God forgives you, he puts your sins in the ocean of forgetfulness and he puts a signpost, no fishing. <laughs> Don't let your neighbor's makeup oppress you. They don't know what is under their garments. Don't let anybody's success intimidate you. Run your race. God is mindful of you. And he does not consult your past to determine your future. He is God. God does not gossip. No, he doesn't. So in Zechariah chapter 1, beginning from verse 18, one of the hands is the tongue of people. I'm going to show you a scripture now that I encountered. I have been praying that scripture, and I need to share it with you. We're talking about only three things tonight, and the first one is the tongue. The tongue I've divided into two, the tongue of people. It can slow you down. Look at Vashti. It was the tongue that dethroned her. It wasn't her husband, the king. Her husband was upset. What did she do? Married women, you know now. Sometimes your husband says, come down, say, darling, please, I'm tired. What did she do? That was strange. But people helped her to amplify it. They magnified her mistakes until the man Forgot about her. No voice to speak for her in the palace. The memocans of life. Tongue. It slows people down. Look at Ziba. In the book of 2 Samuel chapter 16. The Bible says when David was a little past the top of the hill. 2 Samuel 16 from verse 1. Behold, Ziba, the servant of Mephibosheth, met him with a couple of asses, saddled, and upon them 200 loaves of bread, 100 bunches, blah, blah, blah. The king said to Ziba, what, what is all this? Ziba said, these are for the king's household now, hmm, to bribe you. Verse 3, the king said, where is your master's son? Ziba said, oh, he's at Jerusalem. He said, today shall the house of Israel restore me. Verse 4, the king now said to Ziba, behold, Thine are all that pertain unto Mephibosheth. Maybe you don't understand that story. I want to pray for you. Your enemy will not get to your helper before you. Yeah. It's a serious prayer. Zippa got to David before Mephibosheth. And David said, I give you everything that belongs to him. I always give this example. If Pastor Kingsley wants to help Pastor Mildred and he's, he mentions it to me, I want to help Mildred. I feel led to help her. And I say to Kingsley, hmm, okay. Hmm. I've not said much to him, but I have said a lot. Either he will reduce the help or cancel it. And there are some of you, the reason why you have not gained momentum, the reason why you are not yet fulfilling your marital destiny, the reason why you are not as worthy as you should be, the reason why you are not encouraged is because a Ziba spoke to your David. And it's so bad, Pastor K, 
that they even sing and they laugh. <laughs> we bless God for you. <laughs> we thank God for you. And they just finished. Raise your right hand to heaven. Every ziba in your life, I demolish. In 2022, your helpers will not listen to your haters. Whatever should have got into your hand and has been stored because somebody used a tongue against you, today we reverse it. By the grace of God upon my life, I reverse it. You shall be held. Take your seats. I'm just warming up tonight. You shall be held. One day the Lord said to me, there is no strong man anywhere, only helped people. You will be helped. That's what you need. Look at Isaiah 54, verse 17. I pray this scripture every time. Oh. No weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against me in judgment I shall condemn. Let us look at the message translation of Isaiah 54, verse 17. Let's read it. But no weapon that can hurt me has ever been forged. <laughs> Say, that's me. No weapon that can hurt you has been forged. I have come here tonight to give you assurances about 2022. It's not like the other year that you, you, you had epileptic breakthrough. This one is solid. It's not because you can pray. It's not because you can fast. God just decided to be God in your life. Tell your neighbor, get ready to watch a movie. So, you're going to be praying now. Once I read this scripture to you, you will drop your back, drop everything, and pray, maybe in tongues on your understanding, for about 30 seconds minimum. 2022, here we come. Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 18. Jeremiah 18, 18. Then, look at it very well. Then said they, come, and let us devise devices against Jeremiah. For the Lord shall not perish from the priest, nor cancer from the wise, nor the word of, from the prophet. Come, and let us smite him with the tongue. I live in a city called Akure, even though I'm not from that place. When you hail them, hmm, you know every, every city, every village, they have the way you hail them. Ah, Akure, I will do a transliteration. The one that drops the sword and uses the mouth to kill. That's the meaning. So imagine what we saw in that city. And some of you, there are cities like that. There are situations like that. They drop the sword and they use the mouth. He said, let us smite him with the tongue. Please stand up. Drop everything you brought to church. This is your life. When it comes to your enemy, it's a matter of who pulls the trigger first. We're still in number one, no tongue. Everyone planning to smite me with the tongue. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Heaven smites you. You want to smite my ministry? Hey! In the name of Jesus Christ, heaven smites you. Heaven smites you. Heaven smites you. Heaven smites you. My husband shall not be smitten. My children shall not be smitten. My grandchildren shall not be smitten. My people shall not be smitten. I shall not be smitten by the tongues of men. Make it a yapper goes out on the Brogoska. Regas at the yapper goes out on the Brogosha. Ayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayay
Proposta. Riga Santa Yaboga Shata La Proposta. Begata La Proposta Shata La Baka. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. From your mouth to God's ears. You will not be smitten by the tongues of men. Let your amen roar. If you don't believe in spiritual warfare, you are daydreaming. My husband will say there are people that are not happy just because you are happy. They wish to be you. But it's too late. That is one A. Three things I'm sharing with you today to gain momentum. One A. Tongue. Tongues of others. Now we want to talk about your tongue. We have dealt with the enemy. The haters and the critics. Now we want to talk about your tongue. In 2022, please use your tongue to bless yourself. It is a weapon. The book of Ecclesiastes tells us that the angels, they don't know anything called error. Do not say before the angel it was an error. If you say something that you think you shouldn't have said, the moment you realize it, plead the blood of Jesus Christ. Battles are raging in the spirit realm. Plead the blood of Jesus. Science has now proved to us, confirming the Bible, that words do not die. Any word you speak goes to wait for you in the future, bounces around you. It is now a scientific fact. Words do not die. Genesis chapter 1, God said it and God saw it. If you don't want to see it, don't say it. Wake up in the morning, look at yourself in the mirror and bless yourself. There were people that made more money, more progress during the lockdown because they understood the biblical principle of lockdown. In the, in, in, in the book of Exodus, there was a lockdown. Egypt was locked down, but something was happening behind the scene. Israel was prospering. God was killing the firstborn. In 2 Kings, there was a lockdown. The prophet said to the woman, lock your door. Behind the scene, oil was pouring. Money, she was making money. Stop focusing on what you don't want. The absence of evidence is not the evidence of absence. That is not showing up now does not mean it will not show up. It's a matter of time. Let me read maybe two or three scriptures to you and then I'll move to number two. Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Proverbs 21, 23. Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from troubles. But this is the one I want to share with you. Real one. This one is sweet. First Samuel 25. We see the story of Abigail. Please pay close attention. First Samuel 25. Do you know David was going to kill Nabal? And Abigail came and interrupted and spoke. She used her tongue and blessed David. And David changed his mind. She took some gifts. Now, fast forward to verse 40. This same woman. First Samuel 25, verse 40, please. The Bible says, And when the servants of David, look, look at the power of the tongue. And when the servants of David were come to Abigail, to Carmel, they spoke to her, saying, David sent us unto thee to take thee to him to wife. Please go ahead. And she arose and bowed herself on her face to the earth and said, Behold, let thy handmaid be a servant. To wash the feet of the servants of my Lord. A king sent for you. That he wants to marry you. You said, let me be a 
servant. To be washing the feet of servants. And that was what happened. She did not even say, let me be washing the feet of David. Let me be washing the feet of servants. When they were looking for who to inherit the throne, her children were not there. Because her purpose for coming to the palace was to be washing the feet of servants. She said it with her mouth. A woman that used her tongue to deliver herself, few verses before, now she became a servant to be washing the feet. No wonder Bathsheba had a chance. Because in 1 Kings chapter 1, Bathsheba said to David, you promised me. You promised me that my son, what are you saying about yourself? What are you saying about your marriage? What name do you call your spouse? You're so angry as a man, you call your wife stupid. Can I let you know that it takes a stupid man to marry a stupid woman? What name do you call? When our first child, our first child is a, is a man, he's married now, all our biological children are married. Now, when he calls me on the phone, this is how I respond. He's an engineer and a pastor. I said, hello, excellency of dignity. Beginning of my strength. You shall continue to excel. How are you doing today? What do you call your children? The power of the tongue. You want to gain momentum? You can pray till tomorrow. If you speak against yourself, the angels don't descend to ascend. It's in the Bible. Genesis 32, they ascend to descend. They are here. They are listening. They ascend and then they descend. What are you saying? What do you call your husband? What do you call your business? Every morning, I bless the works of my hands. What do you do? What do you say about yourself? The tongue. Many people have been slowed down today because they don't use their tongues well. From today, start blessing your shop. Bless your business. Bless your ministry. Bless yourself. Lay hands on yourself and bless yourself. Look at yourself in the mirror and call yourself, hey, the billionaire has just woken up. <laughs> See the beautiful queen. Call yourself what you want. The tongue. In 2 Samuel chapter 3, look at verse 2. Until David were born sons in Hebron, and his firstborn was Amnon of Ahinoam the Jezreelite. Verse 3. And his second... Chiliab of Abigail, the wife of Nabal. I've not even heard that name before in my life. Chiliab. Because the mother said she was going to be a servant. We've heard about Amnon, even though it's so evil. Chiliab. What's in, what, what happened? What do you say? I once heard Pastor E. Adeboye say when he was growing up, if his mother called him and he answered, the woman would say, when you grow up and you call one person, 100 will answer. Look at it today. From that day, I started. Oh, because the secrets of champions are in their stories. If Baba walks in now, this microphone will drop in my hand. You know how many of us are here? In 2022, be very intentional. If somebody looks at you and says, I think your face is familiar. Don't say, I, I don't think I know. Say, your own too is familiar. <laughs> because that may be the angel that will help you. Somebody looks at you and says, how are you doing? Don't say, uh, and so, so say I'm gaining momentum. That should be the way you greet yourself now. How are you doing? I'm gaining momentum. Even if it looks as if you are going, no, I'm gaining momentum. That's what you should say. You think this conference is just to come and write notes? Even if you don't write anything, be looking at me now. You'll get the tape later. All the ones who've been writing and writing, look and let this drink. Let it sink into your spirit. How are you doing? I'm Let's move to number two. I just spoke about tongue. It helps you to gain momentum. The second thing that I want to speak to you today is 
tribe. <laughs> tribe. You want to gain momentum? Walk with momentum gainers. I'm so sorry, this may sound like pride. I hope they will not cut it again and post it. I don't walk with my mates. I walk with the picture of my future. I look for people, Elizabeths, that are equally pregnant, that will not eat me up, that know what it means to have morning sickness, that understand the protocol of pregnancy, because I am an ever-pregnant lady. As soon as you greet me, congratulations, you just delivered, I'm pregnant again. As I stand before you now, some of you know that I sell food. Amala, pande diam. See your crow. I have a salon for nail, male and female. For hair, I sell fabrics. FFA casuals. I have a gym. I have a children's play area. I have a mini hotel, 28 rooms. I have halls. I'm a certified coach. I'm not only a preacher. I have my certificate. I coach. I have a metric center that is registered. And people pay me. As I stand before you now, I have gotten the land for FFA Girls College. You criticize me, you are just wasting your time, wasting your energy. You don't like what I see on YouTube. Go and start your own YouTube channel and use it. Must you always take from my message? I cook the message under the Holy Spirit. Must you always come and you to go and see whether it's easy to prepare a message. And beloved, in case you do not remember, I'm a human being, B-E-I-N-G, not a human being. So I'm not yet perfect. I make mistakes. I say some things and I say, oh, I shouldn't have said that. But excuse me, my cane is not in your hand. It's not in your hand. Did you die for me? Did you call me? Who are you? Winston Churchill said, on your way to destiny, you cannot stop and be throwing stones at every dog that barks. I don't have your time. I'm busy mingling with the Holy Spirit for another pregnancy. I'm pregnant. The reason why you hear what your penina is saying is because you are not pregnant. A pregnant person does not envy a mother because it's a matter of time. You don't have the time. When you wake up in the morning, the first thing you go is Instagram. No, that's not how to live. Be intentional about your life. Download from heaven. Make your affirmations. Speak into the atmosphere. Tell the sun and the moon to help you. It's scriptural. Judges chapter 5. The stars fought against Sisera. Magnify the Lord with your life. And get pregnant. So that every time people are congratulating you. Congratulating you. A few years ago I said to the Lord, I don't want to carry a normal anointing. I want my mates to be scarce. And watch me. I'll be 59 in a few days' time. I am inviting you to my 100th birthday. I've given you enough notice. Almost 40 years. Don't tell me you're in Australia. If you're in Australia, you must come and attend. 100 years. The devil that will kill me is not born. Kill me. I will eat you up. They that know they are God. I got born again 42 years ago. Come and be making a noise. 
Shall a woman like me flee? You are kidding me. What are you carrying that you are missed? I carry the Holy Spirit. Who can conquer him? Some people go, some are sent. He sent me to this generation. And I cannot be silenced. Publish it on the streets of Ashkelon. Tell it in Gav that FFA has just started to leave. All of you that are here, join politics. Become policy makers. Start your blogs and amplify the voice of the church. Go into the entertainment world. Go to sports. Let nobody think they have the monopoly of the airspace. You know how much you pay for data? Start a blog. Do something. Write a book. By God's grace, I have written and published 104 books. Write something. The generation is waiting for you. Catering simplified. It will sell. Nobody's reading big, big books now. Just small, small books like this. It will sell. Three chapters. You are done. <laughs> General, a book is a book, whether it is small or it is big. Tell your neighbor, write your book this year, write it. A book is a book. Somebody shout, I'm blessed. Hallelujah. I'm speaking about tribe. Which tribe do you belong to? Let me simplify it. I'll soon be done. The nation of Israel is one nation, but there are 12 tribes. Locate your tribe and stay there. All of us can never worship in one church for administrative purposes. That is one of the reasons the cross has four entrances. North, south, east, west. Come without scarf. Come with scarf. Come without jewelry and makeup. Come with jeans. Just come to the cross. So, if in your tribe they don't wear jeans, and in my tribe we wear, it is none of your business. Just make sure you gain momentum and just make sure you make the rapture. I may wear lipstick. I may make up. I may not cover my head. But my spiritual brain is correct. Which tribe do you belong to? Who is in your tribe? Because you look like what you look at. Yes, yes. Your friend is the prophecy of your future. Your company determines your destiny. You want to gain momentum as an eagle. If you are listening to what chickens and parrots are saying, you are flying too low. Locate your tribe and stay there. Know your tribe and stay there. And stop peeping into another tribe. Did not hear what the sons of Zelophehad had said. Ah, let's marry here so that our inheritances will not go to another tribe. Some of you, it is this altar that blessed you. You carry the testimony to another altar. What's wrong? Is that your tribe? You want to gain momentum? Some blessings are not said, they are provoked. Some blessings come from the mouth, some come from the soul. Genesis 27, bring me verity that my soul may bless you. Who is your father? Life will ask you that question. 
It doesn't matter what anybody says on social media. The church is a family entity. You have the father figure, you have the mother figure, you have the brethren. God ordained it that way. And do you notice that the church is unstoppable? It may shake, but it cannot pour away. Ole me, ole dano. They will attack us, attack us, bars, bows, bars. <laughs> After it comes down, we're standing stronger. Yes. Stronger. The church. Jesus said, why are you kicking against the pricks? The church. That is God's most prized possession on earth. We may be stinking, but we are his church. He died for us. And he knows how to clean us up. He takes us to his word. He cleanses us and we are still growing. Know your tribe and stay there and stop peeping. Why are you sleeping with one alhaji? Does he belong to your tribe? Why are you dating a married man? He does not belong to your tribe. This matter now, tribe by tribe, stay in your tribe. Stay in your tribe. And there are certain things that characterize each tribe. Therefore, don't marry a man because of what he drives. Marry him because of what drives him. <laughs> That's part of understanding your tribe. Because in our tribe, our men don't beat us. In our tribe, our men are secure enough to let us shine. In our tribe, our women, our wives don't dishonor our men. In our tribe, our children surround our table. It is a tribe of honor. We know how to honor people. We don't worship men. We worship God. But we honor people. Ephesians chapter 4, the people that God has raised... As our leaders, we honor them. We don't use our fingers or our mouths against them. Because it's a matter of time. Genesis 8.22, winter will never follow winter. You saw it, it's a matter of time. You will repeat. Life will ask you that question. Where's your tribe? First Samuel chapter 17. The last verse. The moment David killed Goliath, the first question Saul asked, who is your father? Life will always ask you. Luke chapter number 13, that woman that was bent for 18 years, Jesus said, I may not know who she is, but I know who this daughter of Abraham. When trouble comes, it is your tribe that will rise up for you. Where do you belong to? You can't afford to be in 52 churches in 52 weeks. A rolling stone gathers no moss. You cannot continue to change pastor as if you are changing clothes. Because they, they chastised you. Because you were disciplined. Discipline is your brake system. Any car that has no brake system is prone to accidents. Happy is the man whom the Almighty corrected. Job 5 verse 12. Happy is the man. They corrected you during choir hazard. You now left to go and start Original David Christian International Center. <laughs> God did not call you. You flashed God. You flashed and your wife too was telling you, even me, I want to be a mama. <laughs> so that somebody can carry my leg. Another person can carry my bonbon ministry. It's not palatable. According to the book of Hebrews, when you are being chastised. But that's what brought us to where we are today. That's our treasure flaw. Never marry a man that does not have an authority figure over his life. The day you will cry in the palace, nobody will cry with you. Never marry a man that has nobody he fears. I don't fear nobody. He is a danger on two legs. 
Who is your tribe? The last one. What is the first one? Tongue. Second one. Remember, work with people that are examples of your dreams. You smell like the company you keep. If you can behold it, you will become it. Pursue mentors. Read their books. Don't abuse grace. So upward. Amwa Yedepo is my mentor. I followed that woman for 31 years. She's the authority figure in my life. Mami Faith Oyedepo. I submit to her. I will honor her till I see Jesus. And I'll continue to sow into her life. So money. She doesn't need it. It's for my sake. So honor. Speak about her around the world. That's my mama. In whose tribe are you? Don't be deceived by what is going on. There's a generation that curses their father and does not bless their mother. It's a matter of time. Oh, don't join them. The word of God has been tried over and over and over again. It stands sure. God knows what he's doing. Who is in your tribe? Some of you, you need to change tribe. A tribe where all they do is pull down people. PhD, pull him down. Don't give money to that church. Don't go to that church. That pastor is writing. Uh, with or without your tithe. Church. The way God has ordained it. God is, God is not fear. God is just. Sad the scriptures. A God of faithfulness without injustice. True and righteous. You see. If you invest your time, your life into shell, we shall not pay you. So you look at a pastor and you think it's your money we are eating. You really think so? And we are there at the hospital bed when you're, when you're having your baby, when your child, hey, hello daddy, hello pastor. Giving you what money cannot buy. You think God will not reward? Forget it. God is faithful. You think I don't listen to you? <laughs> the last T, Thanksgiving. Tongue, tribe, and thanksgiving. And I want to spend a few minutes here. And I'm going to give you a short drama piece. Then I'll pray with you and close. Second Samuel chapter 6, from verse number 11. Second Samuel chapter 6. Because in Psalm 115, Psalm 119, verse 164, David said, seven times a day I praise you. When I encountered that scripture last year, I set my alarm. So my alarm will ring once in a while. Seven times a day, I must praise God. Seven times a day do I praise you. Ah. I said, this man cornered God. Oh. So I started. Even if it's for a few seconds, thank you, Lord. Psalm 100, message translation. Before we read 2 Samuel 6. God bless whoever is on the council. You're doing well. <laughs> Whoever it is, I owe you hundred dollars. <laughs> I will give it to your papa. Now, everybody, let's read this scripture. Psalm 100, message translation. On your feet now, applaud God. You just sowed a seed. You want to gain momentum? Learn to applaud God. Okay? Now let's go on. Let's go on. Bring a gift of laughter. <laughs> Sing yourselves into. You see that when we do praise worship, we're not waiting for latecomers. 
We are singing ourselves. Praise him. Listen. Pastor Kingsley, Pastor Midred, myself, my husband, all these pastors, ambitious. When we get to heaven, our work will cease. You are the only one that will have a job in heaven. It's true. So I give it to you. Let's go ahead. Sing yourselves into his presence. Let's read, everybody. Know this. God is God. Period. And God, God. Wait. What did I just see? God is God and God, God. Tell your neighbor, end of discussion. Bishop, man is not God, though. Your situation is not God, though. God is God. He made us. We didn't make him. We are his people, his well-tended sheep. Go ahead. Enter with the password. Amen. Tell your neighbor, I just got the code. <laughs> You know when you have a key that has a lock code? He said that's the password for your computer. In 2022, what is the password? Thank you. As you are driving. Thank you. As you are putting your children to bed. Thank you. Even when you are making love to your wife. Listen, is it everybody that can make love? What are you doing as if you are holy? After all, your pastor, I hear him every time. These are the things he talks about. This man. Hmm. Enter with the password. Thank you. Make yourselves at home. Talking praise. Thank him. Okay, sit down. Please move this pulpit for me, please. Move it to the back. I don't know how many times I have shown this drama. It's evergreen. It blessed me several years ago. Thank you. Just move it to the back. Bring me a seat. Pastor K, please come. Drop your Bible. Drop everything. This is the third point. Your tongue to gain momentum. Your tribe and thanksgiving. Now, look at this. I need four men. <laughs> okay. Please sit down. Surround him. Okay, I have five. It's okay. Surround him. So I watched this drama in a church some years ago. The Almighty God sat down. You know, He's the Almighty. And one woman was coming. As she was coming, she was complaining. Oh God, I don't even understand my life again. I've been serving you. I've been in that church for... She was just complaining. Public complaint commission. Complaining and complaining and complaining. The almighty God was listening and he was a bit upset. And the angels were telling him, calm down daddy, don't worry. Just calm down. When the woman got to God... She almost stepped on the angel self. <laughs> Even her body language. God, I don't understand, oh. This is 2022 again. Ah, uh ah, -uh, father. How now? Blah, blah, blah. She was just talking rubbish. The Lord said, okay, I know what you need. Patience, follow her. <laughs> Endurance, go with her. Long-suffering. As soon as she finished, another woman started coming. you. you. The Almighty God started tapping his feet. What shall I render unto Jehovah? What shall I write down? 
Take all the glory, Lord. Take all the glory. Take all glory. While God was tapping his feet, the angels were dancing. This woman was singing. I was. She was singing Igbo. She was singing English. When she got before the Lord, she went on her face. Those of you that always come late to church and you miss praise worship, I pity you. In 2022, change. Things happen. Praise is a weapon. Only great fools are ungrateful. This woman laid before the Lord. The Lord said, what do you want? The woman said, sir, I've not come here to ask you for anything. The one you did in 2010, I've not thanked you enough. The one you did in 2019, I've not thanked you enough. Baba, the one you did last year, I'm yet to thank you. Oh, God. You are the mighty God. The great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mighty, 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 mighty God. The great I am. Hallelujah. said to the woman stand up she said Lord let me just be like this the Lord said stand up she said let me be like this the Lord said to the angels pull her up prosperity follow her honor follow her favor follow her wealth follow her Good health. As they were about to take off, the Lord said, Even I will follow. You are the mighty God. The great I am. And we will, say, we will say that you are good, that you are good. and all the miracles you've done have brought us joy. And we are changed, and all the hopes we have is in you right now. Oh, the Father, Father, we declare that we love. you have you want to be married worship God you want to carry your children worship God you want to prosper in your ministry worship God you have a challenge with your health worship God worship 
worship him just before I bring up God's man in case you are here tonight you are not yet born again what a privilege you have to give your heart to Jesus to give your heart to Jesus in this atmosphere of worship just say Lord Jesus come into my heart be my Lord and my Savior I give you my heart today wash me clean let my name be written in the book of life I will serve you forever and if you live around here please worship in this church it will be a great blessing I want you to use 2022 to worship God Lord today is January the 7th I worship you from now till December 31 for all the money you will give me for sound health for victories for blessings for breakthroughs in ministry I give you all the glory I magnify you Lord thank you father in the name of Jesus we have prayed get ready because you will celebrate I hear in my spirit there shall be sound of abundance of rain where you are today shall be the least you will ever be in the name of Jesus